we have this lobby which has an amazing historic um, map of Narragansett Bay done by William Holland Brewery. His daughter, uh, Hope Goddard, of the Goddard family just passed away, but uh, they are very proud of this uh, painting and very involved with making sure that it's maintained. And you can see that the mantle references uh, Edith and Ward Wetmore, who were on our board of directors when we were founded in 1919 by Trinity Church and several leading citizens in the community. Okay. In that period of time, in 1919, we had a full Navy base, mm -hmm. we had an active fishing fleet, and we had a very active seaport because there were no bridges. So when these primarily men had free time, they didn't have any place to go uh, other than to the bars and taverns along Bank Street, which I heard was called Blood Alley. So they, these leading citizens decided to found the Siemens Church Institute under the umbrella of the New York um, Siemens Church Institute. Okay. And we were housed on the second and third floor of the People's Cooperative Bank, just down the street, and now it's People's Cafe. Okay. About 10 years after that, we had become so popular with men who were going there to change their clothes, have coffee, play pool, just chat, have the um, priest who was in charge then hold on to their money. Um, that we were outgrowing that space. So Edith and um, Maud Wetmore said, we'll buy that old commercial warehouse on Market Square. We'll have it torn down. We'll have our architect construct and furnish a building that we will donate and dedicate to Siemens Church Institute in honor of our parents. And their father, George Wetmore, whose portrait is over our uh, fireplace mantle in the lounge, uh, was a governor of Rhode Island, a US senator, and very involved in, in keeping a naval presence here in Newport. So he was involved with the Naval War College and the, and the Naval War Station. And so this was a tremendous gift. And the building was dedicated in January of 1930, they had two conditions which I think were very progressive for these two women. One was we needed to be independent of Siemens Church Institute in New York because they didn't want the property to be sold out from underneath us. So we became independent in the mid-1920s as the Siemens Church Institute of Newport. But their second condition, written right into our deed, is that if Siemens Church Institute of Newport ceases to exist, this building that's been in continuous use all this time must be given to another nonprofit agency or torn down and turned into a green park because they never want it to be commercial property. So similarly, our chapel, which is on the second level, uh, which was dedicated um, three years after the building was uh, constructed, uh, that gift has a deed restriction that says that if Siemens Church Institute of Newport is no more, the chapel must come apart in pieces and be reconstructed at the Newport Naval War College. Why don't we um, go upstairs and we can check out the library and the chapel. Okay. This is the second floor lobby and this area is very comfortable for people to sit and relax and see the half halls and the ship models that we have here. It's a beautiful library. Well, this is the Mariner's Library. The books here have all been donated and they are all relative to something to do with the maritime occupations or histories or uh, sailing novels and that sort of thing. The more Unique or rare books are behind our uh, glass doors, but are accessible. We also have um, something called the Warren Collection, which is a series of photographs and slides taken of the harbor at the turn of the century in the 30s um, that people have accessed. We have 
some small um, mini Bibles, some of which are 100 years old in different languages that sailors took with them on board ship. Uh, so these are all available for people to access. However, if they need something from these cabinets, they have to come and get the key from the office. Otherwise, it's an honor library. People can come and use the, the books. Um, in order for them to use this library, do they need to be um, staying here, or can they be just a member of the general public who contacts you to say that they want to uh, look at some of the things in the library? They can. Um, it's open. Our building, the entire building, is open 365 days a year to the general public. People are able to use this library for meetings. Uh, we rent it for receptions or for uh, programs and that sort of thing. The Naval War College uses it for off-site classes. Uh, organizations use it for retreats. And uh, people who are just from the community or boaters, um, particularly during the summer on an inclement day, come in because our entire building is Wi-Fi accessible. It's beautiful. Um, do you want to go into the chapel next? Sure. This is our Chapel of the Sea, and this was uh, constructed as a gift from a Mrs. Webster about three years after the building was dedicated. And it was done in memory of her mother, um, whose name is at the top of the door frame. It's the longest name I think I've ever seen. And, and wow. Webster uh, asked the artist, Dora Friedley, to uh, involve uh, saints on the walls um, in this uh, pseudo fresco uh, uh, arrangement uh, that are connected to the sea or sailors or fishermen or pilgrims. So there's a very um, maritime connection here. Yes. The little girl over here in the corner is uh, an image of her mother as a young child holding a lighthouse as a beacon of hope. And then there are stories, sea-related stories taken from the Bible. I was raised a Baptist. This is Episcopal. <laughs> so yeah. I only recognize Jonah and Memorial. And up in that corner is Noah's Ark. Right. But all of these uh, have uh, an explanation in a brochure that we have. Mm -hmm. The uh, uh, altar is meant to uh, look like sailcloth, carved sailcloth. The floor is meant to look like the bottom of the ocean with coral and shells and seaweed. And then, of course, we have the compass of values rather than a geographic compass. Drew Friedley was a muralist and a painter in Newport and New York City and was very famous at the turn of the century, well, not the turn of the century, the not late 1920s, right. early 1930s. <clears throat> This is his largest artwork, and he died shortly after this in an automobile accident. And the Newport Art Museum uh, holds his original sketches and notes about the construction of the chapel. And the Newport Art Museum, I understand, is going to be doing a program in 2014 about the artist, Rur Friedley, and we're hoping that we will be able to coordinate uh, their program with an opportunity for people to come and see this true treasure because people are amazed to find it here. It is extraordinary. The first time I came in here I literally gasped about how beautiful it is. It's, it really is extraordinary. Uh, we have weddings here. We have got, I have not personally had um, an opportunity to see a baptism, but we have the baptism of Bon. We have memorial services. And we've had three weddings so far this year. And admittedly, they're very small. Uh, so every year when I get uh, questions about wanting to reserve our chapel for a wedding, my first question is, have you ever been here? Right. Because if they have been, they know what kind of a size space we have. But then if they want to have a reception or a before or after in the library, that can be arranged as well. Do you have a pastor? Uh, not at this point. When the Siemens Church Institute was originally founded in 1919, our superintendent was a, an Episcopal priest. 
and that was the case until 2001. And while the priest was here, he had regular services and he gave communion and he was able to have much more of a pastoral um, relationship with the chapel and with the entire building. But when the priest that was present here as superintendent in 2001 retired, uh, the board was not able to find another priest at that time. So Jack Grant, who was on our board of directors, became the interim superintendent and did so very, very well for eight years. <laughs> and um, fast forward to today, 2013, we have Michelle Duga, who has been our new superintendent for about six months, uh, and um, well, only actually for about three months, and uh, she's the first woman uh, superintendent in our 94 history, wow. and the third lay person in, in that history. So, yes. Shall we go on? This is the third floor of our facility, and it used to be originally it was a um, dormitory for sailors. And now, since our uh, elevator was installed uh, two and a half years ago, and we renovated all of these rooms, we now have 10 rooms and two shared baths that are available for the general public or for people connected to the sea or for military, active or veteran um, guests to stay. We have a total of 10 rooms, as I mentioned. Two rooms have single beds, one room has twin beds, five rooms have a uh, one double bed, and I'd like to also show you the uh, queen size room. Okay. Overlooks Bowen's Wharf, and uh, the rooms are all very clean, very comfortable, and again, they've only been available for just about two and a half years, and after all of these renovations were done, the board of directors, since we are a nonprofit organization, the board of directors felt that we should make these rooms available and take advantage of our unique history and our amazing location on the waterfront, and also use these rooms to generate revenue to offset some of our own operating costs. Do you have like a cleaning staff? And yes, we have an amazing housekeeper um, who does not only these rooms, but the entire building. And it's like her own home. She yeah. takes tremendous care of not only every guest and every guest room, but the entire building. Mm -hmm. So when our guests are given their key to their room, they're also given a key to the door um, that is on the Bowman's Wharf side of our building. So they can come in through this entrance. Um, even though our building locks down at 5 o'clock at night, they can come and go as they wish. Really quite phenomenal in a historic building that had no additional land. It was quite an engineering feat to mm -hmm. put this um, elevator in. And one of the ways that uh, we were able to do that as part of this history with the Heart Capital campaign was selling some of these bricks, creating a, a, a memorial wall. Um, yeah, it, and we do call it the memorial wall. Back in the lobby, um, and I just want to ask you a few questions, dear Jane. So what is your role here? I'm now the Development and Special Projects Coordinator, and I've been at Siemens now for about five and a half years. And have you always done this type of work, or is this something that you've done um, in a retirement? Well, I've always been involved in nonprofits, either as a volunteer or as a staff person. My husband and I owned a business in Wakefield, where I still live, for 29 years. We had a camera store. So this history and uh, connection with people is, is still something that is part of my DNA. Well, you definitely know um, this location very, very well. Um, Seaman should be very proud to have you on staff. Well, thank you. Um, and thank you very much for taking the time out of your day to give me the tour. Well, I hope it prompts people to come by and see us and experience the place, you know, personally and enjoy something at our cafe and, and uh, enjoy this treasure.